Welcome to Acoustic Corner. I'm Steve Rothenberg, and each week we'll explore the world of acoustic music, from blues to bluegrass, classical, flamenco, and fingerstyle guitar, and everything in between. We'll feature live performances by some of the best musicians and bands in the Denver area, and visit local guitar shops and luthiers to discover where you can find yourself a beautiful custom-made guitar, banjo, or mandolin. For those of you interested in learning how to play guitar or improving your skills, you'll find lessons on how to play fingerstyle guitar, blues guitar, as well as other popular styles. Join us each week for a tour through the acoustic music landscape. There's something for everyone at Acoustic Corner. Hi, I'm Steve Rothenberg, and I'm here at Michelangelo's Wine Bar at uh, One Broadway in Denver, and I'm here with the own, owner, Melanie Kinnentator. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Steve. How are you? Thanks. I'm fine. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, what we've got planned today. And uh, just a word about that. We've got uh, 10 musicians who we've uh, asked to come down here on Sunday afternoon to record for a, uh, a feature we're going to do on the show called Live from Michelangelo's. And uh, uh, every few episodes, or perhaps every, uh, every episode, we'll have some live music from some of the people we're going to record today. So uh, a lot of people uh, know that we have a, uh, an open stage. That you run an open stage down here every, uh, it used to be Thursday, and now it's Wednesday night. Yes, Wednesday so, nights. Yeah. So what are the kinds of musical um, um, events do you have uh, down here? We have several musical events. We have um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are all, uh, if you have a band, is able to book uh, for that evening. Uh, by emailing me at melanie at michelangeloswinebar.com and we could set you up for a, an evening um, if you have some music that you want to play. If you just want to see what the venue is like, please come out for our open mic nights on Wednesday nights. And this has, this is a, as, you'll, as you've uh, been seeing, this is a, uh, a really uh, uh, cozy place to play. I, I enjoy playing here as much as uh, any place I've been. And um, you also, uh, you serve wine and beer and, and coffee and what else? We have a full bar. Wine, beer is mostly what we do, but we do, we do have a full licensed bar. We also have paninis and salads uh, with an Italian theme. And um, coffee, any kind of breakfast foods pretty much that you'd like to enjoy here. So we have a full um, little restaurant. I, I can attest to that. I think I've had everything on your menu at, le at least once. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, recording the uh, fine musicians we have down here. And uh, you'll be able to see them uh, not only uh, on the show, but also uh, here live at Michelangelo's uh, Wednesday nights, open stage. And you probably have a website where we can check out your, uh, your lineup? Yes, michelangeloswinebar.com. And there's a full uh, schedule out every month. So October should be up and running, and we'll be having November schedule up soon, I hope. Great. Well, thanks very much, Melanie. It was a pleasure talking to you, and um, I hope you enjoy the music. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much for choosing our venue. You're welcome. Spread your wings Gonna 
to take to the sky. But until that morning, nothing can harm you. With that being mammy, standing by. I break down and cry 
can remember if we said goodbye. Rothenberg, and I'm here again with Hannah Sanders, one of my new guitar students. We, um, you may have seen a lesson already um, where I've, uh, we were learning how to finger pick Silent Night using our finger style uh, method. Now we're going to work with a flat pick and learn a strum, which Hannah's actually worked on and is pretty good at. It's the a basic um, oh, folk song strum. We're going to play it, we're going to sing Puff the Magic Dragon, or at least attempt to sing it. Uh, since uh, this is a guitar lesson and not a, a voice lesson, but um, I think it'll sound fine. So Hannah, why don't you show us the strum that we're going to work on? Great. So it's down, down, up, up, down, up, and then after we play that we switch to the E chord. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so you've only been doing this for maybe two or three weeks, maybe three weeks. And have you noticed that it gets a little bit easier and you start to, re you know, it gets a little bit smoother? So now we're going to switch to the D chord and play the same strum. Okay, now one thing I recommend when you play the D chord is if you can avoid playing the top string, then you'll, uh, you won't be playing a chord that, uh, a note that isn't in the chord. So if we play the bottom five strings. Very good. Now we go back to A. Great. And then we go back to D. And now to A. You remember B7s? There you go. And then to E. Very good. So that's a, a strum that you can use over and over again and then it becomes very fluid. Now, you're using a pick and you may notice that I'm using my fingernails. So if you don't have a pick, you can imagine that you're holding a pick and then when you strum down, you're strumming with this part of your fingernail, and when you're strumming up, you're str strumming with your thumb, the, the fingernail on your thumb. So it looks almost just like, uh, almost like playing with a pick. So that means if you forget your pick, you, you, you can still strum. So of course if you forget your pick, you can finger pick, use your fingers, but um, uh, we're not going to play that on this particular song. So let's play it once again through. I'll play it with you. And I'll call out the chords. Okay. Pop the magic to E. Dragon. Whoops, we both messed up. Do it again. Down, down, up, up, down, up. And then to D. A, C, and then back to D, and then back to A, and then to B seventh, and then back to E. It. So that's what's that's what's strumming the down the down down up up down up. That's what that strum sounds like after only three or four lessons. And um, after a while, you're going to be using that um, uh, all over the place. Although we'll, there's many more strumming patterns that we can learn, which we'll cover in future lessons. Well, thanks very much for joining me today. I'm uh, Steve Rothenberg and I'm here with Harry Tuft of the Denver Folklore Center, 1893 South Pearl. In, in Denver. In Denver. And uh, I've known Harry for a long time. We've, we've done a business here and there. I've had a couple of students come down and uh, pick up some instruments. And I think I bought my first uh, dobro. I think it was yeah. right from right there behind me, this rack. It was a, a regal, which uh, mm -hmm. That's great. I've since moved on to a, a, a a, a Gibson Dobro, and, and the mm -hmm. person who uh, bought my Regal, I'm sure, is quite happy with it. So um, you've had this store for quite a while, I understand. You've been I around, sort of a fixture in Denver. <laughs> yeah, kind of a fixture, I would, I would say. Um, yeah. There's a joke there somewhere, but I can't dredge it up <laughs> fixture, at the moment. Well, well you have yeah, a couple of fixtures <laughs> on the ceiling here, but a different, different um, kind of fixture. The, uh, yeah, it started in 1962. Mm -hmm. Um, next year we'll celebrate our 50th anniversary. Wow, that's right. We've been in be. this location for 18 years. Yeah. And uh, where you, um, uh, you, you're pretty close to Swallow Hill, I know, which you're, you're Very associated much so, with. Very right. I know there's a, yeah. and I've, uh, we, I, we know a lot of folks over there. In fact, uh, one of our uh, good friends, Jake and Ender of Mountain Holler, is a teacher over there, and uh, I've taken some lessons with Ernie and... Uh, Wonderful. Uh, uh, um, Keith Frankel, and so mm -hmm. all, all names that we know. Sounds like you're a multi-instrumentalist. Well, I've, I've, uh, I've, 
I've tried. <laughs> I, I always thought I mean, I'd play all the other instruments as well as I play guitar, but somehow it's not worked out that way. I, I think it's well, you've mentioned almost all of them. Yeah, just well, I think, it's a, I think it's a time management issue for, for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I'm looking forward to hearing you play later, too, because uh, I'm not <laughs> much of a player. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, let, we'll let the audience decide that. So uh, you've been here since 62. You're from the East Coast, right? From Philadelphia. And what mm -hmm. brought you out? You decided uh, Denver was the place to be? Well, I'd been skiing in college, and yeah. um, I had a have a friend who was very enamored of Boulder, mm -hmm. uh, a fellow named Dick Weissman, and mm -hmm. um, and Dick talked up this area yeah. a lot, and I'd been doing some performing back in in the Philadelphia, New York area, right. and so I I thought I was in graduate school, but I thought I would take a, a leave of absence and come out and see what I could do by way of of uh, skiing and uh, working the ski areas as a performer. Mm. And so that's what got okay. me out here originally. Right, and obviously you, you liked it because you stayed. Well, you know, actually I had the same reason for coming out. I decided to uh, uh, move from New York and, and ski for a year, and that was maybe 10 years after, no, more like 20 years after you came out, but uh, mm. 1980. But uh, there's a great music scene in Denver, and this is certainly uh, uh, one of the places for it. I know you have uh, you have jams uh, every uh, yeah, every we week. Every well, it's yes and no. Yeah. Uh, it's every Monday night uh, yeah. with time off. Mm -hmm. We go from the first of the year through June mm -hmm. and take the summer, July, and August off. Start again the Monday after Labor Day and right. go to Thanksgiving. Right. And then stop between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right, and you probably have a schedule of that on your website. You know, when you have your. Uh, I'm not your sure. Jams. That's a good question. We'll have to. Well, we'll have to check the we'll website. See where it's not there. We'll, it is. We'll make a sure jam it gets is on. not exactly the, probably accurate anymore. It's yeah. really a song circle. I see. Um, most of the folks who come, I'm mostly a, a songster, a ballad mm -hmm. singer, and so the, uh, the leader tends to kind of influence, I guess, what the way the jam right. it goes yeah. so yeah. I mean we anybody who comes is welcome to play anything yeah. with two exceptions we don't we don't allow flutes and we don't allow basses ah but you do allow uh, banjos good and we do allow banjos okay, and mandolins and uh, if people come in whatever style of music they want to play yeah. it's fine with us yeah. but it's not a bluegrass jam as right. such, so yeah. a lot of times as it would be bluegrassers story. come and are not not excited <laughs> <laughs> by what okay. we do. Well, there, there are places for bluegrassers too. Yeah, I actually, uh, a number of years ago, I, I, I came a, a few times and I haven't come since, so I'll have to come back and That'd be check great, it out. love to have you. Yeah, so we've got a couple of uh, uh, guitars, a couple, three guitars uh, uh, off stage here. Uh, right. And uh, I, I'd actually, I want to start with this one here, because it's, the, when this you put, right yeah, there? I'm just going to reach, reach yeah, I think I can. Okay. Maybe a little. Okay. Right. This is the one. So he put this in my hand. And he said, Harry did. He said, uh, so who, whose guitar do you think this is? And I, I started playing. Yeah, played some Elizabeth Cotton. I said that was right. close. That was but close. Quite. And then we guessed Elvis Presley, and that wasn't close either. But uh, <laughs> no, <it laughs> maybe a few in between. And then we, it's, uh, this used to belong to uh, Mississippi. It was John one of Hurt. five guitars that, that John Hurt had. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, it was thought that this was the first instrument. When, when John um, came from, or was brought from Mississippi to the Newport Folk Festival, the very first time that he came, mm -hmm. um, he stopped in New York City in Greenwich Village at a place called Fretted Instruments, mm -hmm. um, owned by a, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and was told by the Newport people that he could choose any guitar that he wanted and uh, it was thought that this was the guitar that he that he chose mm -hmm. it was definitely a guild definitely a sunburst guild definitely an f30 but subsequent pictures have shown that it that that, that the gears are a little different and the sunbursting is a little different so um, at the moment I'm not sure that it that it was that but it was one of five mm -hmm. and um, the owner of the store was, uh, is, at the time, was Mark Silber. Mm -hmm. Mark lives in Berkeley, and I asked him about it, and Mark said he asked John Hurt why he chose this guitar when there were many other guitars far more expensive in the shop, and, and Hurt said, I always wanted a guitar with two colors. <laughs> and, well, uh, that's e which e is the way he yeah, described that. E easy to please. Uh, well, it, it's, it is so a... So anyway, it's, it, it, it is... As I said, it's one of five, and yeah. it came uh, out this way in the hands of a fellow named Jerry Ricks, mm -hmm. who was 
um, a guitar player from Philadelphia mm -hmm. who um, who worked at a place called the Second Fret. And yeah. when Doc Watson and John Hurd and Skip James and others like that would come to town, they'd stay at Jerry's. Mm -hmm. And Jerry learned as a result all these incredible licks, now, uh, just wonderful music, and, and was a wonderful player. Mm -hmm. He died, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, I think, by now. Um, and Jerry, uh, John Hurt gave Jerry that guitar. Jerry brought it out here, and when he left, since it was not his original guitar, mm -hmm. uh, he, and he couldn't travel with it, he sold it to David Ferretta, a friend of mine who um, had a shop here in, in mm -hmm. town at the time. And it's in David's estate, actually. Oh, is that right? Yeah. The, yeah. It's, um, I, I know there are a lot of guitars that have just uh, really interesting histories, and uh, you probably have a bunch of them there. But I see there's one here that we had pointed out, the Santa Cruz. This one, this is great. This is a, this is a, a gorgeous, recent gorgeous instrument. Guitar, this is God. Madagascar Rosewood, which is um, quite, a, uh, quite an interesting wood. Um, and this was designed, uh, Santa Cruz asked Otis Taylor, if he, uh, who is a fellow who uh, is a blues singer, is now internationally known, lives in Boulder, but who grew up around the Folklore Center from the mm -hmm. time he was 14. And uh, Otis asked me if I would help him design the guitar. And so this is what came out. It's basically an H13, 13 frets to the body. Otis said, I don't play those frets, so why, do, why, yeah, why should they them? be in there? There's his signature in right. there. And, um, and the shading came from Santa Cruz. And so when the first one came through, I liked it so much that I, I had to make me one, so it has my initials there as well. Oh, quite nice. Well, maybe, you can, maybe we can get Harry to play so, that uh, in a little so bit. That's, and that's, it's, not my, it's, it's not my working guitar, but yeah. it is an absolutely wonderful guitar. Very nice. Well, we look forward to hearing you uh, shortly and uh, having you do a couple of tunes. So uh, thanks very much. You're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the show, and um, if you play and you'd like to be on the show, or if you know somebody who might like to be, or if you know of a venue that you uh, think might be a good one for us to come down and shoot, um, why don't you contact us at the email address you see on the screen, and uh, we'd love to uh, have you on.